Welcome to Yuri Experience and today I want to talk to you about causation and correlation. As you probably know, there is way too much information nowadays. We have internet, we have TV, we have something else, but information is coming at us from all possible directions. And you would think that that is a good thing. And you are kinda right, but not completely right. Only because now we have more information, that doesn't mean that our information has high quality, that our information has any truth to it. For example, a lot of media, a lot of different sources of media, love, really love to take some information, turn it around, pull it to some direction and then provide it to you so they can follow their own agenda and provide to you somewhat true information, but not really. It is kind of true, it is kind of believable, but it is not actually true. The things that I see on a lot of occasions is when people take some scientific paper and use it to prove their point, although their point has nothing to do with the paper, or if that paper doesn't prove their point at all. And I like science. I'm a big fan of the idea that science is as close to, as close to objectivity, as close to 100% as we can get. That is why I will not tell you, ignore science, ignore scientific papers. That's not what I'm saying. But what I do say is instead of completely trust any source of information, any kind of media, Instagram posts, instead of trusting all of that, take a little bit of time and read the papers, try to understand the papers, try to understand what does this post tries to say, what does its source of information tries to say. Today I want to cover with you the difference between causation and correlation and in the next video I will cover what is the difference between observational and experimental studies. Let's jump into it. So correlation and causation. You probably heard about that, maybe actually not, and I'm not even sure that you know a lot about that topic. And it is okay, I don't blame you, that is something that majorly science people use these cool words, if you would say like that. However, they help a lot, a lot in understanding what the paper is actually about, whether it proves your point, and whether the post that you are reading somewhere or video that you are seeing somewhere, whether that all even make a, even has any connection to your topic and proves anything. So correlation. Correlation is when two things are developing in the same way during the same period of time. When you think, oh, both of these things are developing together, then probably there's some connection between them. And this fact of this developing together, this kind of relationship, that is correlation. However, and that is the main point of this video, correlation doesn't mean that one development was caused by the other development. No, correlation only means that two things are developing in the same way. That's all. Not that one thing was caused by another thing or vice versa. But if one thing was caused, it was proven that one thing was caused by the other thing, then you have a causational relationship. One thing was caused by the other. Some strange examples. You turn heat on and it gets warmer in the room. That is a causational relationship. Higher temperature of the room was caused by higher temperature of heating system. But the fact that this clock isn't working since approximately I turned my heating on has nothing to do with... these two facts doesn't have anything to do with each other. Only because both of these things happen during the same time and develop on this pretty much same heating is on this thing is off. Only because these two things happen at the same time that doesn't mean that these two things are connected, that one thing causes the other thing or vice versa. The reason why the clock is off is just because I take the battery off. 
out, out. Yeah. So the concept is clear. I assume, I, I hope that the main concept is clear after this strange but still explanation. But a lot of people misuse correlation and try to make a causation out of it. And by the way, that is what media is doing all the time. First, let's have an example where two things are not correlated to each other, but they are both caused by the other thing. Let's talk about an example. With increasing of sales of ice cream, you can also observe increasing of amount of people who are drowning in water. Without critical thinking, you can just jump to the conclusion one thing is caused by another thing. So, in a lot of ice consumption leads to a lot of people drowning. But except for the point that that doesn't make sense, these two developments are also connected to a different point. These two things are not actually connected to each other. Both of them are connected to high temperatures. A lot of ice cream is sold during high temperatures, when it is warm, when people need something cold to cool down. On the other hand, a lot of people go swimming when it is warm, because they can swim, because that is time when you go swimming. So increasing in sales of ice cream happening during summer is no wonder. And increasing of people who are drowning during summer is also no wonder, because more people go swimming. So these two facts are connected to summer. Summer. Drowning, ice cream. Not connected, because that doesn't make sense, because both of them are caused by this one, by summer. Another example, wrong assumption about reverse causation. You know that when windmills are working, these rotating things are working, there's also always wind in them. So you could assume that windmills produce, there is a reason why wind exists, that they produce wind. You could assume that because there is one thing connected to each other, they do happen at the same time. But if you have critical thinking, I hope you understand that wind makes windmills rotating, it makes it rotate. It's not the other way around, not windmills create a lot of wind. And probably wind existed prior to existence of windmills. I'm not completely sure, I didn't live during that time, but there's quite high probability. And the last one, no causation at all, correlation only. And, th and this one is connected to today's thumbnail. There is this correlation, and you can look that up in the source that is in the description, that is, there is a correlation between the amount of divorces in the th city of Maine and amount of margarine that is eaten. The graphs are completely the same. I do not lie to you, you can look it up. But it doesn't mean that one thing is caused by another thing. Except for the case that all of the people who divorced buy margarine and eat it in huge amounts. Which I doubt. So from today you can learn what is causation, what is correlation and what is more or less the difference. And if you want a summary, correlation, these things just happened to happen during the same time in the same way. And by causation, one of the things caused the other thing. And you can use this for your critical thinking in every freaking day. Every day in our life we get so much information which doesn't make causational sense. That is only correlation and these things just happen simultaneously and you connect them because people like patterns and you connect these things together and you make a connection out of it although there is none and a lot of people do that and that is how you make wrong assumptions you spread lies you spread false information misinformation and whatnot that is the reason why a you should be careful with words if you assume there is a connection and you are not sure about that then say it you i assume that there is a connection because of my limited experience. I didn't prove it because I didn't ask people, I didn't make any experiments and whatnot. And B, check your sources. Find out whether what sources are talking about is actually causation or maybe it is just correlation. Just literally two things happening parallel to each other. Don't fall into this idea. Everything is connected to each other somehow. If it would be like that, then me doing like this 
would be hitting you on your cheeks. And I really hope that doesn't happen. More about causation, correlation and some other topics will come in the next video about observational and experimental studies. Because in order to prove that something is not a correlation, is not an assumption, but actually a fact, a cause, you need to do experiments, you need to do studies. But that will come in the next video. From this video, you can learn that a lot of things that you say are assumptions and not facts. And be careful with that. And with misinformation. And with wrong sources. I hope you understand what I mean. I hope you know where is the like button. I think you also know where is the comment section. If you have any questions, suggestions, write them in the comments below. You can also subscribe to the channel. But except for that, I see you on Thursday.